Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News, and we're changing the conversation. We've got somebody really very exciting here to talk to us. I just watch. Take it away. Take it away. Indeed. <laughs> well, a recent development in Nigeria reveals the prompt effort by the Nigerian police. Uh, Nigeria police in freeing about 1,000 children and adults from uh, several Islamic schools in northern Nigeria. One such school was discovered in Daura, President Muhammad Buhari's hometown in Katsina. The crackdown has increased pressure on the president to tighten oversight on traditional Islamic private schools known as al Majiris. Gladly, more than 1,000 children have been released from various Islamic religious schools, also serving as rehabilitation centers for children with behavioral problems in northern Nigeria. We have many questions. However, there's one thing, you know, to release the children. Another is to get them properly fitted into society in Nigeria. So joining us to talk about that is Dr. Mimuna Kadri, psychiatrist, psychologist, who will discuss the religious torture centers of northern Nigeria and the prospect of rehabilitating the rescued victims of such centers. It's a joy to talk to you this morning. At first, why do we even have, because we hear parents sometimes, mm. Mm. take this, their children and put them in these centers in a bid to rehabilitate them for very skewed reasons. I'll take you back. Somebody had an interview. He said he was doing his PhD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that In the case. UK. I know that case. And yeah. because he disagreed with his parents, he came home on holiday. Two years was there. And they took him to that school for two years because yes. he was enlightened. He had seen the light so he could question some decisions. <sighs> What Sad. is happening? It's technically Sad. Um, I like this particular topic for three reasons. Number one, I'm a Muslim. Number two, I schooled in the North for eight years. And number three, I was also in an Islamia, or what they call Mokaranta, or where you learn the Arabic, and, and I was able to do what they call my Wulima even by 11 years of age. So what they are doing right now is outrightly rubbish. I will tell you, when you say rehabilitation center, they are illegal rehabilitation center. So why would parents take their children there? Stubborn, truancy, the child being bored and say, this is what I want, that confidence child. We are in a society where culturally certain things are not accepted in our children. That boldness. So you see a three, four year old in a rehabilitation center queried Islamic school. They are not Islamic schools. They are chained, they are flogged, they have a, a um, what, which room is it? A torture they, chamber. A torture chamber where they would put your head upside down. A lot of them are put in a single room. So you can imagine even if you are stubborn and you are chained and living in one room, what then happens? With time you start hearing voices. And this mm. is what mental health awareness and advocacy is all about. Get the government to pass a this bill to an act, it will take care of all this. Because now, if we take them out of the these places, like what you just said, what happens to them? How do they get back rehabilitated into the society? But what That's do you say? Question. What do you say to a lunacy law of 1954 <laughs> that is still in existence to today that says that even those people, once you take them out of the rehabilitation center, and you cannot ascertain their mental, mental viability, you should sell all their property and belongings to take care, take care of, of them. them. So that's, that's the where the problem act. Starts. So that is why the bill is there for the, be this ninth national assembly to pass it urgently. We, because with that act, all this, will I say, use the word rubbish now, mm -hmm. or illegal centers will be abolished. Okay, Doctor Mumuna, what is likely to be your clinical assessment of these people? Because mm. in the center in Dara, in particular, yeah. it had children as young as age seven, five in that center, what are the likely consequences on their mental health? A lot. Let me quickly even go to what the World Head of Nation has talked about mental illnesses. Half of all mental illnesses start before the age of 14 and to third before the age of 24. And we have children that are less than 14 years in that place. Mm -hmm. So if we have 100 mental illnesses, for example, that means 50 start before the age of 14. So these people are already faced with a lot of sociopolitical, economic challenges. They are traumatized. And what can come out from trauma? Anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. Even those that are not on drug abuse can start abusing drugs. Psychosis can come in. So for us, 
And also the abuse. The, some of the girls yes. were said to have been molested. Even the so guys, me, the guys were so so me yes. happen. So much sexuality, things that they weren't faced with. They got into that place and they are not faced with these challenges. Aside from medical clearance, which of course is very, very key, just to make sure you rule out any other medical condition, all of them must go through psychological evaluation. From there, they can then be reintegrated back into the society with treatment, with their families. Because now the families must be highly involved. Because mm. if they are not aware, they will look for another Islamic um, place. So this Senate. child, there's something, so he hasn't gotten sense yet. Mm. Let me see, push him to another place. So it has to be both individual, family, everybody involved to get them to that level to say, look, this child might have even had a conduct disorder. That doesn't necessarily mean that this child has um, a, a, a mental illness, maybe a behavioral challenge. So understanding the angle is coming from does not mean that you should put him in such a place. They are cha if when I watched that video, I I shed tears. Which of the videos? There's so many. Yes, yes, so many. So yeah, from Northwest, we've moved to North Central because in Kwara State, uh, in exactly. Lorraine, there was one, you know, busted in, in Kaduna, in Katsina, in Kano. We're seen everywhere. But I'm happy the government is cracking down them. I'm happy that is happening, mm. but of course, it's now getting them better reintegrated. For those in Kaduna, a number of them have been taken care of by the psychiatric hospital there. Okay. That just happened now, mm -hmm. so I'm definitely sure that will be looked into too, because we can't let them just go back to their families. They are not, some of them may never be well again. A lot of us are traumatized in one way or the other. It's in our pathway to recovery, we get to know how people can, on their own level, heal because mm. it's individualized. You know, I love the fact that you said that the families have to be involved. And this takes me to even one of the, the, the leaders of this uh, group that's was a 78-year-old cleric and transferred the rights to his son. Mm. So we see that it's even in the family, something that has been going on for a while. As a Muslim, you know, there are people that are coming under the guise of trying to teach yeah. these children the holy ways or, you know, knowing the Quran as well. How do we break that, uh, that, uh, religious, th that yeah. religious belief that you have to go through this in order to become a certain way? You know? The thing is that when people are faced with challenges, mm. naturally, worldwide, then when we narrow that to Nigerians, because we have to bring it back home. There are two major ways we deal with these things. A lot of times, more than 80% of us go to our religious leaders. Whether you're a pastor, or a malam, you see us going there, pray for me, and all those other things. They must be involved in this awareness program. They must be enlightened. And if we have to really do what we have to do, for example, what I'm saying this is that we still have one psychiatrist to one million Nigerians. So, so you, you can't see psychiatrists in mainly rural areas. People like that can be reintegrated, gotten into our circle. Let's do train the trainers. Let's get the primary healthcare center people trained on picking up all these minor mental health issues. You no, know, because even if they come to the tertiary institution, where do they go back to? To the communities. So the one percent of budget that is allocated to primary health care center, it should be done now. So these monies can we can properly educate the primary health care centers, get the religious bodies trained. The UNODC is doing a lot on the drug um, training mm. and all that. Mm. In general, we're trained as trained, the national training trainers on universal drug prevention. And we've been doing a lot of trainings because it's all about prevention, getting enlightened, getting educated. Because the information we have, when people know it, they won't be doing this kind of uh, disservice uh, to I'm, human I'm beings. All of this is all good talk, but it can't be exciting unless we have mental health under the National Health Insurance Scheme. Yeah. That's a big problem. It's sort of far cry because how, the problem a lot of people will, will tell you is it's difficult to access mental health. Like take, for instance, Dr. Mimuna, you don't come cheap. The only time I have a session with you is on the television. <laughs> if I'm to come to your office and say, Dr. Mimuna, I've got this and that, to speak for 30 minutes, yes. I know how much you will charge. But with medical insurance, insurance Called yeah. subsidizer. I want you to speak through to that. Truly, I, I, I think that is uh, one of the biggest challenges to government national health insurance scheme, then the health management organization, which are the HMOs, they should all have mental health services incorporated. 
at a highly subsidized rate. I can tell because I'm in that angle right now. When you walk in, out of the pocket payment is more expensive than the HMO that will have come to us, negotiated on behalf of their clients. Mm. And so when they come in, they pay a highly subsidized rate. And I'm looking like, why can't we all just buy this insurance? Because you never can tell when you are faced with challenges. We lose loved ones. We may just need counseling. Sometimes you may not be sleeping well. You may just need somebody to cancel you and deal with. Sometimes we may have what we call the psychosomatic problems, where you may be manifesting some physical symptoms because you are dealing with emotional challenges. Mm -hmm. So please, like you do, what you said, national health insurance scheme, health management organizations, they must have insurance incorporated, then all our primary health care centers must be trained, um, 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 the uh, personnel there must be trained, then our state should have proper rehabilitation centers. You know why I'm saying this? We have government, federal government, but most of the other things are private. State-owned centers are, Dara will tell you, they, they don't even have. Mm. Kaduna, they have Baranawa because it's federal neuropsychiatric hospital and it's a federal government. It's not state. So if state also get themselves involved in this, it becomes togetherness. And together, we are stronger. I'm uh, wondering, okay. if, 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 are these not the factors fueling and propelling centers such as this? Uh, when you look at the doctor to patient ratio in Nigeria, this is happening. Mm. Then talk about the psychiatrist <laughs> ratio to patients. <laughs> that is not even existent. Yeah. Let's not even talk about that. I just on the factors propelling centers such as this, and I'm wondering because I'm trying to make sense of all of this. Because yeah. families send their loved ones to these centers. Is it possible? Is it possible that centers like this can actually provide such care? And I'm saying this because one of the yeah. owners did say initially the center was okay, the ratio was okay, it just became overburdened after a while, after many years. Mm. Is it possible to get any sort of care from such a center? And when we talk about the will let, of let, when... Let, let's, let's take that response, Dr. Mimuna, when we come back from this break, and it's very important. You're watching The Money Show here on the Rise News. We'll be right back. Join us again. Welcome back to The Money Show here on the Rise News, and we're still talking to Dr. Mimuna Kadri, a psychiatrist and psychologist, discussing the recently uh, um, search will I say, or crack down by the Nigeria police of so-called uh, rehabilitation centers where people are chained or beaten and molested. Dr. Kadja, I was asking you before that break, uh, the lack of professionals, yeah. the, the funding we, mm. we had mentioned earlier, yeah. uh, out of pocket for health, I just, don't you think that there's some of, some of the factors that propelling the centers? And is it possible that these centers can actually provide care. Yeah. So when we look at the wheel of awareness, mm -hmm. spiritual awareness is one of it. So yes, they can get um, spiritual awareness, which is very good too. We need to be all round, uh, even if it's not 10 over 10, at least five, just be that, that kind of balance. Mm -hmm. But when it now comes to medical and psychological, they are not equipped. Yeah. And that is where they need support. I'm a psychiatrist. If you come to my center and you have high BP, I'm not a cardiologist. I'm going to refer you appropriately to where you get it. So it's still lack of mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. And what, is it, what, are, what are the drivers? Stigma, discrimination, taboo to talk about it. If they are aware and they are trained. So people like that, what they can do is to train them. So, okay, you've given this child spiritual awareness, mm -hmm. but you still notice this child is behaving this disease. Refer to the appropriate center rather than them chaining them up. I have a friend in Jos, Dr. Aisha al -Miao. They did the research on street children. They found what were the drivers, poverty. Mm -hmm number of children, increase in number of children, and of course our social, uh, cultural, religious beliefs, were the drivers that take these children to, to the street. They, were, they wrote to up to 11 malams, because she, she, she's, she's in just mm -hmm. only two accepted to allow them to interview their children. They interviewed 107 children on the street. The, for, the, the youngest was a three-year-old. And they found out that what, there are a lot of mental illnesses associated with these children. Top on the list was drug abuse. 
because they are exposed. They go on the street, they beg, they take the money back to these malams that use it for their own family members and their children who are not on the street. So we really need a lot of advocacy on mental health, pass the mental health bill, state government have to, they just have to stand up, arise. Mm. We're on arise TV anyway. <laughs> <laughs> arise and... in this quest, you know. I mean, mm. because I keep referring to the likes of Dr. Adeo Yolambo. Yeah. We, we all know the monumental impact. Just yeah. one man. Exactly. Adeo Yolambo made in mental health yeah. in Nigeria. In fact, apart from the... He, he single-handedly... Did a lot of things. Did a lot of things. Yeah, right. So... How do we get more Dr. Ayuri Lambos? To get into it. To get into it. More, okay. more foot soldiers. You know, because this bill, for instance, it needs to be passed. I remember when we both met at a forum talking about uh, drug abuse by a top telco in this country. That was the same conversation Jumbo. we had. And it looked as though since we started the campaign, nothing has been done. So I, I smiled when we were talking about this because the average Nigerian is still hungry. Poverty is still high. There's an exodus of doctors out of Nigeria because they are not properly they help the the labor the la there's a crisis the labor the labor minister it is, said we it's not yeah, true. It said, leave that story we it know what is true. on ground between now and December I can for free tell you the number of psychiatrists that will still leave now I don't even ask people why are you leaving. Mm -hmm. Because they, they will even tell you these days that they are living. So the question, where are you going? Where are you going? Mm -hmm. And then they will not send you a message. I have just relocated. I have settled down. This is where I am. Not less than 10 to 15 psychiatrists. I'm not talking of those in residency. Mm -hmm. These are consultants that have gone through another six years of training, leaving the country. We still have less than two of them. So the truth is that the days of Adeo Lambo, I think things were easier. Maybe government were paying more attention. And they could accept, accept certain recommendations and strategies in putting things in place. Any little thing you bring on board now, they will set up a committee that will take up years as if you are having a litigation. It shouldn't be like that. It should be action. We are, we are tired of talking. It's time for action. The action should even start. Ninth Assembly, pass the mental health bill to an act. It's, we are, we, that bill will soon turn to an orphan bill. If, the, if we don't, um, um, certain measures are not taken. I mean, Lagos State have passed yes. how, how are you lobbying for that bill? How, no, we are, we are, the, the association how, of psychiatrists. The going on? No, no, no. We, we are doing. No, the thing is that a big guy won't go to the floor if it's not sponsored. Mm -hmm. So it's sponsored. The Association of Psychiatrists of Nigeria we are taking a lot of measures. They, anytime it's time for a hearing, they go. We, we go around. Of course, and there are other non governmental organizations also quality. And we are also trying to move, you know, the health sector. Every, there's a committee for everything now. Yes. So, look, the senator on this, the House of Rep on that, getting everybody, let them even hear. And I think with this that is happening now, they will, should all know mental illness is not it's not a respect of anybody in power. It can happen to anyone. I mean, it, Prince we, Harry came out recently. Exactly, and exactly. said, look, I did, but yeah. even when my mom yeah. died, Prince Harry you saw, came out. we need to understand that it's not by power, it's not by strength, it's not by your social class or no your... Religion. No religion. It can happen to you. So passing that will help, number one, alleviate that. Look, there's a law now. Mm. Certain things can be done. You can't sell people's property. You can't just take them to this illegal home. You can't call them lunatics. You, can, you can't call them lunatics. And then these illegal homes will not be operated. But of course, capacity building is urgently needed. How many psychologists do we have? How many psychiatrists do we have? How many psychiatric nurses do we even have? Capacity building. So when we get the primary health care personnel trained, Get these people that have this legal, okay, you have the interest, come for this training so you can help pick out the little, little things you can deal with and refer to the appropriate bodies. Okay, to quickly bring it back to these particular children that over the past month we know that have been released mm -hmm. and, like you said, have, have been pulled back into rehabilitation, uh, rehabilitation centers. Now, everything you've said makes a lot of sense, but it's, it's, it, it, they're like long-term goals. Yeah. What are the short-term goals that we can put into practice? Like, as I did so, I'll say mm -hmm. quick fixes and solutions that we can put out there and can make a change and make sure that these people are rehabilitated back into society. We right need way. people to be more, um, to come out more to speak out. If we, if we are narrowing down to the northern Nigeria, neighbors know where these, these centers are. 
they should come at once and say, look, this is one place. So we get everybody out. And then, of course, the government, because there are things that individuals can do and there are things government can do. With the government involvement, it makes it more proactive and is more robust. Get the government involved, get crack down all these centers, of course, do the medicals and do the proper rehabilitation. Because there are centers that can actually help once government is involved. And get their families. You can't do it alone. Because if you think you can rehabilitate in isolation and don't get their families involved, it's work done zero. Mm. Well, this was no surprise to you. Do you think that it should come as a surprise to the government? That there are centers like this? Yes. They know. Government didn't just... Anybody in government that didn't just um, become a government official. Mm -hmm. You grew up in a community. And... I said I was in law for eight years. I knew this. Yes. I did my, my first medical research on motherless babies' homes. So these homes have been in oppression for years. Well, and we just, just felt that these are children that we are stubborn, they are practicing trans, they, their own views are different from our own views. And we have never started talking about this transgender and all those other big issues. So we are still even talking about the basic things. More of the millennials will come out and be talking about these things. And I don't know what parents, how equipped parents uh. are. So deal with yeah, yeah. How, how, how should parents deal with it? So take for instance, take for instance, you, 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 so, 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 so you come back home, take for instance, and, and you show your parents a picture of Bob Risk and say, mom, is this good? Some parents will just die. In fact, yesterday I had that conversation with a mother. She said, I am biased. I said, no, I, I'm an expert. I'm not biased. If my child comes and tell me, I will just educate. She said, no, no, no. I will cry. I will call the fire. I will pray. I will fast. I said, that is not the solution. Mm. <laughs> you must face reality. Parents, they also need to be equipped on what they need to do or how they need to work with these issues when we are yeah. faced with them. Because mm. most of us are sending our children outside the country. And they are bringing this <laughs> so back. back. The world is a global and village. And apart from that, they are watching it on television. Exactly. The revolution is being televised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Social media has taken over. Hey, so what what have, yeah, real quick, before we go, what made you stay back? Because you said a lot of psychiatrists <laughs> have left. Why did you stay back? We die here. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. That brings us to the end of the show Thank today. You so much for it's coming. been exciting. My name is Rafael Hosseini. I am Adesa Moran. And I'm Shaito Antigari. Thank you for watching. From my entire team here in Lagos, enjoy the rest of your morning and the rest of your day. We die here. <laughs>